I'm Eric Capitulic. I'm the founder and president of a company called The Program. The Program has one mission, develop better leaders and create more cohesive teams. One mission, develop better leaders and create more cohesive teams. That's what we're going to do over the next two days with the time that we spend together. Before I continue, I'd like to, my teammates to introduce themselves to you. You will get to know them very well over the next two days and over the course of this season. Corey? Good afternoon, man. My name is Corey Ross. I'm a graduate of Texas A&M University and then a recently retired Marine Corps officer. During my career in the Marine Corps, I served as an infantryman, as a tank platoon commander, and then most recently as a special operations advisor out in eastern Afghanistan. Through two years on the ground in Afghanistan, conducted nearly 200 combat patrols, many of which resulted in direct fire engagement with enemy forces hiding up in the hills on the, on the Pakistan border. I had the honor and the privilege of leading and serving alongside some very brave men in combat. Man, before we move on here, I need everyone to sit up straight in your chairs. Good. Gun down and desk take off. Take the towel off the shoulder. Man, we're going to give you 100% over the next two days. I promise you we will. But in return, we expect the same back from you. So, if my teammates are talking, your coaches are talking, and your athlete leaders are talking, we expect that you extend them the respect they've earned. Everyone understand that? Yes, so, guys are talking. We're making eye contact, chests are up and proud, not playing with your hair, not looking down, right, stand, focused, alert, responsive. Good to go? Yes, sir. All right, man, my full name is Jake McDonald. I go by Mac. I'm a major United States Marine Corps. Graduated from Tufts University in Boston, where I was captain of the football team. Entered the Marine Corps shortly thereafter, and became an infantry officer. Been in for around 17 years now. I've done three combat deployments two to Iraq as a light armed reconnaissance platoon commander, and one to Afghanistan as a scout sniper unit. Been the recipient of multiple awards for valor in combat, as well as the Purple Heart for being wounded in combat. I'm also a black belt martial arts instructor for the Marine Corps. Man, my name's James Sly. I go by Jamie. I'm a retired Master Sergeant in the United States Marine Corps. I've attended and graduated from some of the most challenging schools that the military has to offer. I'm a military skydiver. I'm a military scuba diver. I'm a martial arts black belt instructor trainer. I'm an explosives instructor. I'm an Army Ranger School graduate and I'm a Marine Scout sniper. I've been on two-man sniper teams all the way up to 40-man combat assault teams. Out of 3,600 guys, I was selected for a special unit, 86 guys selected to start up a unit called Marine Corps Special Operations Command Detachment 1, which now stands in the history books for special operations. I've deployed five times in combat operations, and I'm the recipient of the Bronze Star Award. Man, as I said, I'm Eric Capitulic. I'm the founder and president of the program. I'm a graduate of the U.S. Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, where I played college lacrosse. After graduating from the Naval Academy, I served eight years in the United States Marine Corps as both an infantry officer and then in Marine Corps Special Operations, where I had the privilege of serving with Master Sergeant Slife, with Jamie. In Marine Corps Special Operations, you are taught how to do two types of operations, green side ops and black side ops. Green ops are long-range reconnaissance patrols anywhere from 200 miles to 600 miles in front of friendly forces. You get there one of two ways, by doing long range dive reconnaissance missions, two hours to six hours subsurface of the water and to enemy harbors around the world, or by doing high altitude jump missions, anywhere from 1,200 feet above the earth, which isn't very high, up to 25,000 feet above the earth, which is pretty high. We then do black ops, and black ops are one of three missions. Hostage rescue, gas oil platform takedown, and then a mission called a vessel boarding search and seizure. A vessel boarding search and seizure, or VBSS. Once the UN personnel were satisfied that that ship was following the sanctions, that ship could go on its way. But one out of every thousand ships, one out of every 10,000 ships had something it wasn't supposed to have on it. And rather than stopping when a UN personnel vessel asked it to become dead in the water, it would try to run from that vessel. It would try to get 
within two miles off the coast of another sovereign nation. In the Persian Gulf, that nation was always Iran. And if it got within two miles off the coast of another sovereign nation, no foreign personnel could board that ship. So if a vessel did not stop when the UN vessel asked it to become dead in the water and tried to run from it, then the U.S. government would have the opportunity or the option of calling myself and my 24 recon Marines to take that ship down. We would fly over the ship and go into a 60-foot hover over the ship that we were taking over. We would kick a rope out that was attached to the ceiling of the helicopter. When we took these ships down, we wore between 50 and 75 pounds of gear, weapons, equipment, and ammunition. We carried M4 carbine long rifles, 45 caliber pistols, shotguns, blow torches, and demolition gear. We would slide down that rope. That's called fast roping. We would fast rope onto the ship beneath us, fight our way into that ship, and then make it become dead in the water. What I'd like to show you, men, is a brief video of one training mission before we deploy to the Persian Gulf of a vessel boarding search and seizure mission that myself and 10 of my force recon marines were involved in. The helicopter pilot came in too low and too fast and struck the side of the ship. He then pulled on the collective, which would typically give lift to a helicopter. But on that particular day, the back left wheel of the helicopter that my teammates and I were riding in was stuck in this thick metal netting that surrounds most cargo vessels. Causing the helicopter with that back left wheel still stuck in the metal netting to become vertical in the air, invert on itself, and then plunge into the Pacific Ocean. When it did so, all of my Force Recon Marines and I, all of my teammates and I, we were all immediately knocked unconscious. And we woke up sometime thereafter in a sinking helicopter, still wearing 50 to 75 pounds of gear, weapons, equipment, and ammunition, with no idea on how to exit from that sinking helicopter, and with no oxygen. So I fought and I pulled my way through the helicopter as it sank, looking for a way to exit from it. And then, and then I started to swim. But only when I started to swim did I feel true fear. Fear that even today, this afternoon, right now, when I think back to that moment when I first started to swim, I still get scared thinking about that moment. Although the helicopter blades shorn off when the helicopter hit the water, the helicopter engines are still turning, causing cavitation causing bubbles to surround us. And I don't care how mentally or physically tough you may think you are, none of us can hold our breath indefinitely. Making things more challenging for me at the time was that when the helicopter had hit the water, it had hit it with such violence that I had compound fractured my leg. So when I swam in a direction that I hoped was the surface, still wearing 50 to 75 pounds of gear, weapons, or equipment, and ammunition. While drowning, I did so using only my arms because I had a bone sticking out of my leg. Well, a few feet beneath the ocean surface, I could see sunlight filtering down into the ocean. In a few moments after that, I was on the ocean surface. In a few moments after that, a safety boat picked me up and I survived that particular day. But unfortunately, on that particular day, six of my 10 teammates, Six of my 10 teammates weren't so fortunate, and they lost their life that day. I'm now the founder and president of the program. My teammates who introduced themselves earlier to you, they share very similar personal experiences with me. And we share exactly the same professional experiences working with more than 150 college and professional athletic teams on an annual basis. And what we know, not what we believe, but what we know is that talent wins games. That much better allows us to compete for championships. 
And great teams are comprised of team leaders and teammates. That's it. Therefore, the way we get that much better is by making a commitment to being better team leaders and better teammates. How do we get that much better? By making a commitment to be better team leaders and better teammates. Team leaders are held to two standards with the program. Number one, accomplish the mission. What's the first standard a leader is held? Accomplish the mission. Because if you ain't, you could be a heck of a nice guy, a great football player, a great citizen, but you're failing as a leader. Because the first standard that leaders are held is what? Accomplish the mission. Number one. Number two, take care of your teammates. What's the second standard a leader has held? Take care of your teammates. That's it. This is what it means to take care of each other. Make every decision you ever make. Make every decision you ever make thinking about the team's best interest first. That's how you take care of each other. More importantly, we need you to remember the standards that good leaders and the standards that good teammates are held, not just on Saturday afternoon, but how about Saturday night when nobody's watching? Then can you be great team leaders and great teammates to our female teammates that we attend this university with. Get as big or fast or strong as you can in the offseason. Give 100% every single day in practice and go full speed every snap of the football. Any idea what we call it? They expected. Yes, yeah, the expectation. Anybody else? Job. Yeah, your job. More specifically, it ain't leading by example. In our terminology, it's the first standard a teammate is held. And that's called setting the example. What's the first standard a teammate is held? Setting the example. Set the example. If you remember nothing else from our time, remember this. You go to the movies with good friends, but you go to battle with great teammates. And great teammates get held to two standards. Number one, setting the example. And then, because by doing so, it's how we make each other better. The more physically tough you are, Donovan, allows you to put more physical pressure against the teams that you compete. So that, and for all of us, there will come that point that we become physically tired. If that moment is with 30 seconds to go in a football game, but you put so much physical pressure against other teams that they become physically tired with three minutes to go, you're going to win almost 100% of those games. Why? Because very few men and almost no teams can stay mentally dialed in when they become physically tired. Why is that important for us? Because of the league you compete in. What are we going to have this year? Maybe four or five games, maybe six that are going to go into the fourth quarter, still a ball game. In times of stress, we do not rise to the occasion. You fall back on the habits that you created right up until that moment. There's a reason why the coaches have an attention to detail. This is the uniform we wear. Everybody wears it, and we're going to wear it exactly the same way every single day. There's a reason why your strength and conditioning coaches want you to do air squats with your hands in a certain position every single day. Why? Because in games that go into the fourth quarter, those games are determined. And life is determined by the little things. The little things take care of the big things. The details matter in everything that we do. It's going to be uncomfortable playing at West Virginia. It's going to be uncomfortable playing at North Dakota State, out at South Dakota State. we got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. That's what mental toughness is. Hard work is not what you do during normal practice hours. What hard work is, is one more. And we got to figure out what our one more is and make a commitment to doing it each and every single day. If we do so, we have a chance of getting that much better, and that much better allows us to compete for championships. All right, men, all together, one team with one heartbeat. Russ! Get him back down, man.
I say starting position. I then say ready. You yell the command ready. I say attack, and you get him up. Starting position. No, nope. nope. still down. jumping. Hey, one or two guys, that's what kills us in the fourth quarter. The details matter, man. This is why. Right arm, right leg. Ready. Ready. Attack. Six inches off the ground. Hand should be on hey, the deck. Get your legs up. Stop quitting. The other arm stays up. The other leg stays up. Yes, he's ready. Yeah. Come on, guys. Rest it on top. It is. The way you react to adversity is the way you'll react to it on this football field. And at North Dakota State. We're setting high standards today. Our goal is three hours to get to court four quarters. Whether you choose to do so is up to you or not. It's up to you or not. It's up to you. Your success will be in the details. It'll be in the details of looking left and looking right. Sounding off. Attacking at 100%. And attacking at 100% means 100% of the time. It's going to feel like we're screwing with you. If you have your mentality, then you might as well walk off the field. Because our mission is one. Develop better leaders and create a more cohesive team. I need a volunteer. Kevin. Now, Kevin, I just said it. I set you up for success. What is 100%? That's right. Was that 100% coming out here? No, it wasn't, Kevin. Kevin, now does that make Kevin a bad guy because he jogged out here? No, it's a habit. 100%, man. It should be sounding off. It should be loud. It's 100% to the 41. Ready. Ready. Attack. Step up, defense. Kevin is going to demonstrate five simple exercises. He's going to demonstrate. You participate in commands only. How will you participate? Commands only. Commands only. You will demonstrate all the all the exercises. Right here, Tevin. I'm going to tell you push-ups. I'm going to tell you push-ups. You're going to yell push-ups to them. They're going to yell it back, and then you're going to get in the push-up position. Go ahead and do that. Push-ups. 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 Push-up position. From the push-up position, you're going to your head's going to be up. You're going to be looking out at your teammates. You're going to make sure that everybody's in the ready position. You're going to you're going to yell ready. They're going to yell ready back. Then you're going to yell tack, and on tack it's going to look like this, Tevin. One, two, three, one. One, two, three, two. One, two, three, three. You will count the cadence. They will count the repetition. Right now we're getting ready to start the first yeah. quarter. Here's what we're looking for. Your mission. One team, one heartbeat. What's your mission? One team, one heartbeat. What's your mission? One team, one heartbeat. One team, one heartbeat. What that means is, I'm looking for perfect rows, perfect columns. I'm gonna give you three seconds to correct yourselves. To don't stop. And then, if you don't do it, my teammates and I will, will correct it. The time starts over. The time starts over, man. Tevin, stop. Tevin, stop. I don't care about that, Tevin. What I care about is everybody going down and up together. Do you need any time to talk to your team? I'm going to give you one minute to talk to your team. So bring them in. Tell them bring it in. Hey, guys, bring it in. Team. Get up! Get up! Hey, is 75 in line with you? Four, two, three, four. Put on the line. Put on the line. Check your lines. Check your lines. Put yourselves as leaders where you can best impact this. Find some weak guys to get next to you. We should all spread out. One a row. One a row. One a row. Fucking spread out, not just straight down the middle. Whatever you need to do. What's the first thing? What's the first thing that we care about here? Mission complete. Mission accomplishment. One, two, three, one. Jump in jet! Jump in jet! Ready! Ready! Attack! One, two, three! One! Hey, hands back! Hands back! Hey, hands back! Hands back! Ready! Ready! Attack! One, two, three! One! One, two, three! Ready! Ready! Attack! One, two, three!
sandbag holding the plastic handles to the side right on top of your traps right notice that the flap is up towards Jaden's head doesn't matter whether it's out towards the sky or in towards his neck but it's on top not on bottom that's how we carry it not like a football not on one shoulder just like that go ahead and put it down Jayden. all right get everyone standing on the same side of the log pole Left side, 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 left side. Alright, just this log here. Go ahead and pick it up, put it on your shoulder. Now when I yell up, you lift it up over your head. When I yell down, you lower it to the other side. Here we go. Up, down, up, down. Now, if you yell up when I yell up and down when I yell down, the log feels lighter. Let's try it. Up, up, down, down, up. Oh, down. down. Feels lighter, right? I didn't make that up. Put it down. 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 Up. Up. Down. Right knee down. Right knee down. Right knee. Right knee. What is our mission, Cash? Ready. 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 Up top. Come on, come on. Come on, up. Come on. Up. 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 Down. Down. Up. 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 Down. Down. Man, focus up. Stop talking. Stop talking, man. We just failed the first quarter. We failed it. Cash, we failed it. We're failing this one. Don't let go. Switch it up. Wait, wait. Switch it up. Wait, switch it up. Wait, move 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 As leaders, set high standards for your teammates. You know what they'll achieve? 133. You're going to determine whether you're going to be a 149 team or a 133 team. Not this fall, but this summer. The most important thing is listening to my commands when the ops is down, okay? If we drop him one time, if you fall, anything, you start over, all right? I got you, bro. Up fire. Put him down. Put him down. Put him down. Ready. Down. Up! Oh! 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 Attack! Let's go! And how successful a season we're going to have as an organization this fall gets determined right now this summer. I felt we did a poor job that when things went rough, when we faced with adversity, we started bitching at one another. Great teams, when things get rough, come together. No jumping in head first at all. You will jump in feet first, that's it. You will walk on the pool deck, move in a hasty fashion, and you will never jump over a teammate's head. That's it. It's not swim practice. If you have to use the shallow, you have to jog across the pool and use the shallow to get across the pool. Your leaders have been briefed what it is they have to do. Men, you're going to be judged. 
You're going to be judged on being good teammates and being good team leaders. What's the goal? One team! One team! to stop thinking about themselves. But it feels good to be able to reach down and grab your teammate in a moment of need. consistent leader that you are in doing those things that you did out here, how you communicate with your teammates, staying on and doing it on a consistent basis, doing all of those things. If we can be laser focused, the better job you do being laser focused on football in this, in you, football in this team, we got a chance if you can do it so. That was awesome. The guy that we thought was most deserving of it was Hedges. Leaders get held to two standards. The first, accomplish the mission. And then, great teammates get held to two standards. The first, and then, we all want to be good friends with each other. But you go to the movies with good friends, and we go to battle with great teammates. <laughs> 